Hi, I'm Robert Ridpath, author of TLC for the Body, Mind and Soul, addressing the underlying causes of chronic illness. And I'm also founder of Health Synergy Canada. This is my Health Mastery Series. Welcome. You know, I get a lot of questions on insulin and specifically on how insulin affects the body and body fat and what is the connection between insulin, body fat, cardiovascular disease, diabetes and all the associated problems that go with that. And why is it that body fat is a signal, a late stage signal, that your physiology and your metabolism have been out of balance for a long time. So, body fat is a symptom that there have been deadly changes in your physiology going on for a while. And are you aware that there's a new term to describe this connection between obesity and diabetes called diabesity? So we're going to look at this today. So how is it that insulin is related to obesity, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and all these other chronic illnesses? To explain that, I have to remind you that insulin has two primary functions in the body. One function, as you're aware of, insulin is really important for blood sugar management. So it's a storage hormone. And two, a function that many people have forgotten is, insulin is an anabolic hormone. That means it tells certain cells to grow and divide. And in different cells, it has a different effect. So in smaller amounts, insulin is absolutely paramount for good health. It's our friend, if you will. However, if someone develops something called insulin resistance, and that means insulin comes around, it knocks on the door of the cells, and it says, open up, I have to let the blood sugar in. If that doesn't work, the body thinks that the cells are not hearing it, so it releases more insulin. And it's this high amounts of insulin acting as an anabolic hormone that affects our physiology in a negative way. So let's talk about how insulin plays a role in sugar cravings and overeating. So I have to explain to you a little bit of something you may have experienced personally. It's called the sugar roller coaster. And how does this unfold? Well, maybe you eat a high glycemic meal. These are the foods that spike up your blood sugar. Maybe it's a couple soft drinks. Maybe it's two bagels. Maybe it's a bowl of cereal with extra sugar on it. So your blood sugar spikes up quickly. Correspondingly, your body's amazing, so it releases insulin. And remember, insulin drives your blood sugar down. But if you've spiked your blood sugar too much, the body dumps out and releases too much insulin. And that insulin pushes the blood sugar down, and it drives it down not to normal levels, but below low levels. And it's the low level of blood sugar that creates the shakes, uh, and many other different problems in people, but it contributes to sugar cravings. So your body demands at that point that you eat more carbohydrate. And often we uh, gladly oblige and we eat more carbohydrate and your blood sugar goes up again. And again, you release too much insulin and it comes down. So this up and down cycle is described as the sugar roller coaster. And it's definitely not a ride you would like. So what else does insulin do? Insulin is described as a storage hormone, so it tells the fat cells to store energy for a rainy day. It also tells the muscle cells and inhibits them from burning fat. So that combination of the sugar cravings and the sugar roller coaster, stimulating the cells to store fat and inhibiting the muscle cells from burning fat contributes to and is partially responsible for elevating body fat. But there's more going on with this fat story. So I want to explain that to you. So when I talk about insulin, people say, hey Robert, I'm not a diabetic. I understand. But what's really important and that you must understand, and you have to be able to see that insulin acting as an anabolic hormone has these other effects in the body. One of these effects is in the liver, it activates enzymes in the liver to increase the production of cholesterol. That's right, insulin causes the body to produce cholesterol. And it increases something called LDL. And at the same time, it decreases the friendly fat called HDL. 
It also increases a fat called triglycerides, which are really important and an early marker that your physiology is starting to get out of balance. What else does insulin do? In some of my other videos, it was explained and you discovered how insulin acts on the fat cells to convert testosterone into estrogen. So it drives down testosterone, drives up estrogen, and that creates a whole hormonal imbalance in the body. And if this process goes on long enough, what ends up happening is insulin acting on the liver, the liver itself tends to get fatty. So this is called fatty liver, and that's definitely a marker that you're way down this road to diabetes. And also related to this, not only do you store fat in the fat cells, you can store fat in the muscle. And you've seen this, say, in an animal product like steak, where you see the marbling, that's fat in the muscle. That happens to you and I. That's called fatty muscle. So this whole sequence of events, insulin makes your blood fat, it makes your liver fat, it makes your muscle fat, and it contributes and signals the body to store fat. So this is the connection between insulin, obesity, diabetes, and cardiovascular disease. They are all overlapping symptoms of a common disturbance in physiology relating to insulin. So what this means to you? Body fat is a later stage signal. When you have stored body fat, many things have happened previous to that that have disrupted your physiology. So it's not just a body fat issue. It's a major symptom that negative changes are going on and have been going on for a long time in your physiology. Remember some good news though. About 90% of all type 2 diabetics, it's a reversible condition. And I believe that number is even higher. With the knowledge we have today, with diet and exercise, and different nutrients and phytonutrients, I think that number is getting close to 100% reversible. So what to watch out for? If you go to your doctor, you can ask for a two hour glucose tolerance test. And don't just get your blood glucose tested, get your insulin levels tested as well. At the same time, your doctor will probably run and take some blood and run a profile to see what fats are in your blood. You know these, your cholesterol, your triglycerides, your HDL, your LDL. And tri elevated triglycerides, the TGs as they're called, is an early marker that your physiology is already starting to get out of balance. I would recommend you get a body composition done, and that's through what's called a BIA or a DEXA scan. And when you get a test like that done, it looks at the percentage of body fat on your body. And that will tell you what stage you are progressing down this road. Elevated body fat is not a good sign. Also related to this, one point is insulin can also cause sodium retention and it elevates your blood pressure. So your doctor will also check your blood pressure as well. Another simple test you can do, can you pinch an inch? Or do you grab a mile? This is called the waist or the waist to hip ratio and this is a good marker of where your body is laying down fat. Elevated insulin causes fat deposition around the midsection, the belly fat. Cortisol contributes to this as well. And finally, when you have that BIA done or the DEXA test and it looks at a full body scan, look at something called sarcopenia. Sarcopenia means the loss of muscle. Muscle is really important because what they are understanding now, the researchers say that insulin resistance and problems with insulin precede the loss of muscle. So if you've lost muscle and have extra fat deposition, this is called sarcopenic obesity. And that's a bad sign and it takes you on the road to type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and so on. So what are your options? What are the solutions that I can share with you that will make a difference in your health? Well, one of the first things you can do is balance your blood sugar and keep insulin low. How do you do that? Well, first things you can do is eat breakfast and specifically eat breakfast with protein. Eat small meals about every three to four hours. Eat mixed meals with proteins, 
carbohydrates, fats, fibers, and phytonutrients, and focus on quality protein, quality fats, quality carbs. And remember, eat those low glycemic carbs. Those are the carbs that do not spike your blood sugar. And don't eat large meals. That contributes to something called the glycemic load. As I mentioned, eat every three to four hours. Remove and reduce the amount of the unhealthy fats in your diet and take some of those healthy fats. You know them as fish oils, flax oil, hemp oil, walnut oil, olive oil. Those are the good fats. Reduce the stress in your life. Chronic stress and the cortisol associated with it has a real negative effect on your body. Improve your sleep. Uh, reduce inflammation in your body because that contributes to the loss of muscle and insulin resistance. Reduce toxicity. I wrote about this extensively in a few chapters in my book, TLC for the Body, Mind and Soul, addressing the underlying causes of chronic illness. So instead of ch chasing symptoms, you address the underlying cause. I'm Robert Ridpath. This is part of my Health Mastery series. I hope this has served you well and allows you to live a happier, healthier, more fulfilling life. Bye for now.